Rise. More rise. And the judges at the Caribbean Court of Caribbean Court of Justice Original Jurisdiction, CCJ Application Number Three of 2013, between Jason Jones versus the Council of Legal Education, the Council for Human and Social Development, the Council for Trade and Economic Development. For judgment this afternoon, can we have the appearances for the court, please? Thank you. If it pleases the court, um, I'm Matthew Gay, and I'm here led by Dr. Emil Kahn. I can just apologize to the court for Dr. Kahn's absence this afternoon. When the notice of, of the judgment was handed down, he was already had made the arrangements to arrive in the jurisdiction this afternoon, which he, he is still doing. So I apologize for his absence. Right. Mr. Jones is, is in the public gallery. So. Yes. My lords, I am Darren Alhan, which I please you. I instruct counsel for the first respondent, the Council of Legal Education. And I, I instruct Ms. Dr. Lloyd Barnett, Mr. Douglas Mendez, and Mr. Michael Commoner. And I apologize for the absence of all my counsel today and to other court Yes. Um, if it pleases the court, my name is Fayyad Hussein. Um, I have a brief for the Attorney General. Um, I lead Mr. Rishi Das and Mr. Adam Hussein, and we are instructed by Mr. Sean Julian, um, my colleagues in the matter in the Court of Appeal, and I took the time off to come down to be here in case I'm needed. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Council. Oh, we have one of the appearance, yes. Your Honor, should it please you, I am Neil Francis, uh, and I am here on behalf of the Caribbean community, led by Dr. Pauli Tabak Schaefer. Uh, we wish to inform the court uh, that we are not hearing the proceedings at this point. Sorry, I didn't hear that last bit. Uh, I are you hearing us, Counselor? Clearly not. Um, oh. Hello, Council. They are in yeah. which country? Um, Guyana. Guyana. Yes, Your Honor. Are, are you hearing us in Guyana? Yes, Your Honor. We are now hearing you. You're hearing us now. Okay. Um, yes, Council who was making the appearance said something that we didn't catch. At the very end. Your, your Honor, uh, what I indicated at the very end was that uh, we're not hearing, we're not hearing the person. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So that, that's now been remedied. You're hearing us loud and clear now. Yes, we're hearing. Okay, good afternoon again, Council. Um, <clears throat> I believe you have been given copies of the, advanced copies of the, the judgment. Um, there's some very very insignificant um, changes that ultimately would be made to it. But I would read a summary of the judgment. It is not intended to displace the formal judgment of the court and so is not really to be used as part of the court's reasons. The applicant, Mr. Jason Jones, filed an application for special leave pursuant to Article 222 of the revised Treaty of Chagoramos, the treaty against the proposed defendants, the Council of Legal Education, which I would call the Council, Council for Human and Social Development, which I would call COSHAD, and the Council for Trade and Economic Development, which I would refer to as COTED. In the application for special leave, Mr. Jones contended that the automatic admission of holders of the Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of the West Indies into the Council's law schools and the requirement that non-UV trained LLB holders must write an entrance examination have infringed and continue to infringe the rights and benefits 
intended to inure to him on the Articles 35, 36, 37, and 46 of the treaty. The Caribbean community, which I would refer to as the community, and the council respectively made similar preliminary objections pursuant to part 23 of the CCGA's original jurisdiction rules. They contended that firstly, the court has no jurisdiction to entertain a claim against the council. Secondly, Koshard and Coated are not competent respondents or defendants. Thirdly, the application for special leave and the proposed originating application are manifestly ill-founded and inadmissible. In relation to the first objection, the court found that, as accepted by Mr. Jones himself, the claim could not proceed against Koshard and Coated as they did not possess juridical personality. It is in fact the community that is possessed of that capacity. The court considered the communities and the council's second objection, namely that the provisions of the treaty could not be enforced against the council because it is not amenable to the original jurisdiction of the court. It was submitted that although the council was established by a 1971 agreement that predated the treaty which came into force in 2001, there is no mention of the council or the agreement in the treaty. Article 10 of the treaty identifies the entities which are the principal and other organs of the community, and those do not include the council. In accepting the community and the council's contentions, the court relied on the case of Johnson against Caricad, where a similar objection to jurisdiction was upheld in a claim brought against Caricad as the Caribbean Center for Development Administration, where the court held that CARICAD was neither an organ or body of the community, nor an integral part of the community, and so could not be sued by the applicant. In view of this earlier decision, the court found that it was even more compelling a conclusion that proceedings could not be commenced against the council. As the council is even further removed from the community, being not even an institution or associated institution of the community, the court was satisfied that it had no jurisdiction over the council and in exercise of its general powers of case management in part 19 of the rules ordered that the application for special leave to commence proceedings against the council be dismissed. Having found that a claim against Koshad and against Coated could not be entertained since they lacked juridical capacity and that the claim against the council should be struck out the court considered whether the application for special leave to commence proceedings should proceed against the community. The court noted that the remedies that Mr. Jones sought spoke to the operation of the agreement, the council and the law schools and the conduct and actions of the council. The automatic acceptance of UE LLB degree, degrees is something done solely by the council and its law schools. The requirement that others must write an entrance examination is applied solely by the council and the law schools. The court found that since it had no jurisdiction over the council, it would be pointless to grant special leave to file an originating application against the community that sought declarations against the council. The community does not direct or control the council, nor does it manage or administer the agreement. The court noted that according to the papers submitted, the root of the problem for Mr. Jones and many other persons similarly positioned of whom the court had to be mindful is that it is the agreement rather than the treaty that governs the matters they wish to alter. The agreement establishing the council is as much a treaty as is the revised Treaty of Chagrins. It is not suggested that the treaty overrides the agreement or that the agreement has been terminated or its operation suspended by implication under Article 59 of the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. The court must therefore accept that CARICOM states, which are parties to the agreement, must in principle continue to give full force to the agreement and the provisions of the agreement which govern admissions to the law schools. 
The court is of the view that Article 3 of the agreement, which provides that the council shall give automatic admission into the law schools of UE LLB degree holders, is not a matter of policy that the council or the law schools could change. Article 3 would have to and could only be altered by the parties to the agreement. The court found that Mr. Jones's submissions and the declarations that he sought suggested that the application of Article 3 of the agreement was incompatible with the treaty to the extent that such an application leads to an unjustified difference in treatment of or discrimination between holders of law degrees from UE and those from non-UE degrees, non-UE, well, and, and, and those holding non-UE degrees. The court is of the view that Article 33 or 4 of the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties, however, does not apply as the agreement and the treaty do not apply to the same subject matter. But even if they did, Mr. Jones failed to point to anything in the treaty that would make it arguable that the application of Article 3 of the agreement violated or could violate the treaty. None of the treaty provisions referred to by Mr. Jones showed any such violation. Moreover, the one form of discrimination that is prohibited and targeted by the treaty is discrimination on grounds of nationality. And that was not alleged, nor could it be established here. In view of these considerations, the court was satisfied that it was more efficient to dismiss the present application for special leave rather than permit amendments that are entirely at large. The judgment of the court, if it has not already been left with you, will shortly be, and it will also be put up on the court's website. No one asked for costs, and in these circumstances, there will be no other for costs. I'm obliged. I'm obliged. Much obliged to the honorable court. Thank you, Tim Lutz. What rise?